Hello, everyone. Happy New Year. I uh, hope you guys are doing well. Um, this is our first live stream of 2023, which is pretty exciting. It took us nine days, and here we are. Uh, so today is a Mixed Tank Takeover with me. My name is Mark Abrams. And if you're new to Mixed Tank or to Pure Mix, Mixed Tank is kind of like a think tank for your mixes. So on Mixed Tank, you can submit a mix. The Pure Mix community can drop comments and give advice. And uh, if you're looking, you know, for, for something in particular, like if you're struggling with a part of the song, you can specify that and then people can give suggestions. Uh, it's a pretty badass community, so a uh, good place to go to look. Before we get started, I like to um, wax poetic a little bit before before we start into things. And uh, usually I'll kind of like talk about a song that I've been listening to that I thought the mix was really neat on or something like that. And uh, today, since it's a new year and we all like those new year resolution things, I thought I'd share one of mine. And that is that I'm going to be, despite doing you know this, we do this every other week, every other Monday at 2.30, um, where, you know, I'm listening to mixes and giving feedback and all of that. I thought that I should be more diligent about reviewing mixes myself internally and finding ones that I like to kind of, you know, store a little database of, uh, things that I might want to pull out or like inspiration that I might've gotten from different songs. So I'm going to share something with you guys that I made, uh, for myself. And, um, it doesn't have to be, you know, as, as complex as I've made it, but, uh, basically the exercise is to find a song that you really love and be very thoughtful and present while you're listening to it and try to extract some things from the mix that you think are great. That could be things like a great snare sound, a great drum sound, room sound, cool effects that are used, the overall shape of the, the record, like the, the overall balance of the EQ, um, anything that you might listen to it and say like, that was really interesting. That made me pause to think about it. I noticed that. So I'm going to kind of store that, you know, either on a note or internally and, you know, remember that when I'm looking for inspiration someday. So um, what I have pulled up, I, I made a little form for myself. Uh, and again, it doesn't have to be this complex, but basically these are like some of the questions that I go through to kind of like get your mind uh, thinking about this if you decide to do this exercise too. Um, so the first thing I, you know, ask myself, who's the artist? And then I'll ask, you know, what's the song name? I put the URL to um, to the song in my note uh, so I can go and listen to it easily if I go to look at this later. And then I write down three things I like and three things that maybe I don't like or that I'm not sure if I like. Um, dislike is a strong word because it's mixing and it's music. Everything is you know completely up to the listener and um, up to your own perception, so it's subjective. So I go through like three things I love as I'm listening. If I'm like, oh, that jumps out to me, I'm going to write that down. I'll, I'll kind of put it in. And then I put in dislike, but I'm probably going to end up changing that word because so maybe things I'm on the fence about or something I noticed but wasn't necessarily like, oh, I want to remember that. Um, I'll put them in there anyway just to kind of go through the exercise. And then I'll put like three takeaways. So that could be like the overall shape of this was great or I love the vocal balance or like the vocals are out of tune or something, um, you know, and I'll, I'll write those down and then I'll put some final notes in. And uh, using a tool that I love called Zapier, it's Z-A-P-I-E-R, I have that form fill out a bunch of information on a Google Doc. And sorry, I know the screen share is a little bit blurry and hard to read, but basically it just puts all that stuff in a document for myself. And then someday I might go back and um, I'll, you know, kind of read through those and and see this is one i did for panopticon it's a new single from peter gabriel um very cool um and one of the interesting things to me on that one specifically was it was called bright side mix but it didn't sound very bright bright to me at all but there's a lot of cool stuff going on in that and that was one that you know i saw it released i'm a big peter gabriel fan um you know as as many audio engineers are the man owned ssl for after all um, but yeah, I just kind of thought that would be a good one to go and listen to. So I did that earlier today and I'm trying to do this, you know, I'd like to do it once a day in the new year, but this is my list of all the ones I've done. And yeah, you guys can't really read it, but I've only got five in so far, uh, four in, sorry, four in for the new year and we're on the ninth day. So I'm going to pick it up. Um, but yeah, that was my, you know, kind of little thought for today. Uh, is this is one of those exercises where, you know, one, one of the things I always kind of like harp on to people when they're getting started is like just like musicians have to practice their instrument every day we as engineers or mixers also need to um, make sure that we're honing those skills and this is one of the exercises that came up for myself to kind of 
make good on the thing I'm always preaching. So, um, okay, let's dive into some mixes. Uh, so we got a couple hours today. We're going to dive in and try to get to as many as possible. One of the things that I like to do on this is if you are in the live chat and you've submitted your song, I want you to drop your username and the name of the song into the YouTube live chat. That's the one I'm monitoring right now. And uh, I'm going to do my best to get to every mix for everybody that's here in the live chat. If you're watching this later, there's still a chance that we got to yours. And I'm going to explain that now. So this is Mix Tank. And uh, up in the left side at the top, although my screen share is a little funky because of OBS, we got to talk to those guys. Um, there's a draw a track button and that randomizes how the track is selected. So that'll kind of go through all the submissions and then spit one out for me to check out. If we run out of people in the live chat, that's what I'm going to be doing to, to get to other mixes. So if you're watching this later and you're wondering if you got your mix got to, don't worry because of what I just said, there's a good chance that we still got to it. So, all right. Um, let's kick things off in the uh, pre-show. Uh, Etienne Valet, uh, posted that he put a track up called Vaporizer version 12. Uh, so we're going to start off with that one. I also got one from uh, Gord, Lack of Gravity, so we'll hit that after. And then after that, I'm going to be scouring through the YouTube comments, so you guys put those in. This is also a good time for me to mention, I got to do all the YouTube stuff. So hit the buttons down below, ring the bells, hit the subscribe button, hit the likes, the thumbs up, all that. Um, you guys probably hear this on every single video that you guys watch ever but it truly does help us keep content like this going. So if you guys are smashing all the buttons, as the kids say, uh, that will help us make sure that we can be here every other Monday to keep doing this. So, all right, that's enough yapping. Let's hit it. So I see Vaporizer right there, actually. So I'm gonna pull that up and I'm gonna hit the HD button up here because I like the high defs. And here we go. Ladies and gentlemen.
That's freaking awesome. You got my heart rate up for the whole thing. This is great. Perfect one to start with. Thank you, ATN. Awesome. Okay. I got some, some thoughts. First off, that's freaking awesome. Second, okay, um, the, uh, I love the uh, vocal effect that you have going in at the beginning there. That was super cool. There's a lot of really interesting stuff throughout this entire mix. Great job. This is super cool. The band is super tight. I totally dug that. Everybody's great players. Um, this, is, this has got to be a fun one to mix. I'm a little jealous of you, Etienne. Uh, okay, so I'll write down some of the thoughts I had. Um, one more, one more cool thought. This reminds me, especially in like the first verse and the opening of the song of this band called De Stat. I think it is D E S T A A T. It's a van, a band that Vance Powell uh, worked with, and the record that he did. Um, let me try and pull it up for you guys, because uh, everybody should go listen. It's, it's a couple years old, but it's one of my favorite. Um, Favorite records of like the last 10 years, probably, which is uh, saying a lot. But yeah, this is it. I'm going to put it in the YouTube chat for you guys because it's that badass. Um, so yeah, it's called Icon with an underscore between the I and the C. Icon. <laughs> um, but yeah, Vance freaking killed it on this record. And the singer has a lot of the same um, mannerisms, if you will, as uh, the one in the track that we just heard from ATN. Uh, so definitely go check this out. And ATN, this is a freaking fantastic record to check for a reference point it's a little bit quirkier than um where your song ends up going but it's still a freaking amazing reference uh, i love this record i really love it all right um so let me put that in the chat for everybody boom there you go okay uh so let's go over here back to mixed tank and thoughts okay um so uh the intro guitar is awesome it's the main guitar it's through most of the song it's doing the main riff uh it is sitting right up the center with the vocal and it's a little bit brighter than the vocal so the net effect of that which isn't necessarily a bad thing is that if this is the vocal this is where the guitar is kind of sitting or it'd be more like this and two suggestions with that i would take it and if i'm the vocal and this is the guitar i would just move the guitar here and then i would play with the eq bringing the mids back a little bit to just kind of recess it a little bit and bring the the vocal up front and center um i've talked a lot about depth on these before and in, in mixing and how volume balances when you're kind of deciding how something you know if it's too loud or too quiet listening for the depth front to back is a good way to kind of figure that out and you kind of decide like Instead of thinking two-dimensionally or flat with your mix, like what's happening between the speakers, thinking about how close or how far something is from you. And that can be both volume and EQ balance. So if something's louder and brighter, it's going to be closer to you and darker and quieter is obviously going to move further away. So th when I'm listening to this mix with that in mind, like where are things placed? How close are they to me? Um, the, the guitar sits a little bit forward and that's both... Um, a little bit volume, but mostly in the brightness and the upper mids and all that stuff. So that's a good way to kind of figure out how you want things to, you know, sit volume wise or balance wise. Um, one of the examples that I've talked about before is like Daryl Thorpe did some amazing work with the, the Foo Fighters. And um, I think Run is a good example of this from the Foo Fighters where Dave Grohl's voice is just slightly behind the snare drum. And to me, um, the effect of that versus like a pop song where you want the vocal to kind of be out front and center and, and strong and in your face. The effect of what Daryl did with, with Dave on that song was he put him right behind the snare drum and that gave this urgency of like, no matter how hard, you know, Dave was like screaming his face off, he couldn't overpower the drums and it added to the intensity of this whole thing. Like he's yelling, he's trying to get out in front, but just something's like kind of pushing him back and holding him back and, um... That's that's a great example of that to me. So this is a rock song, and obviously, like, you might not want the vocal to be out front and center, or maybe you would. That's, like, cool and rock as well. But um, where I'm at with it is I'm losing some of the lines. Uh, specifically going into verse 2, I lost the first line and felt like at that moment the vocal could step forward a little bit because we're coming out of a big instrumental section and we need to reattach to the lyric and to the story, uh, and I needed to hear that first line. And I, I lost that, and I lost some of the lines after it. Uh, again, this could be an EQ move versus a volume move. A lot of times when I get mixed revisions from people, 
if they want something louder, it's not always that they want it to be louder and take up more space or, you know, come forward necessarily. It's just that it's a little bit tucked behind something else. And this is, you know, partially where your job comes in of mix engineers knowing where like, okay, maybe that needs to sit forward a little bit. Now, uh, last thing about, about this, and then I'll move on. Um, with EQ, uh, I got this trick from Fab. Um, if you think about EQ in, you know, if, if this is front to back, right? What about leaning forward and leaning back? So like this other axis of like, not just being, you know, kind of moving forward like this, but like with that guitar, if you darken that, you could have it lean back a little bit and, you know, you're kind of like creating this sort of weird, uh, my hand thing. But anyway, uh, if you brought the high mids back and the, the lows kind of stay where they are, you can kind of end up getting this weird shape going on. Um, and this is stuff that's like easier to hear if your speakers are set up properly and all that. You want to make sure like you have a good defined center image if you're, you know, listening for this kind of thing. But um, that, you know, I guess to go back to the point, sometimes you have to really kind of dissect comments of like that thing is too loud where it could be too bright. Uh, it could also just be too loud. But anyway, yeah, uh, vocals I felt like could come up a little bit, like in the chorus. Um, he's got a great performance going on, and I think that some of the intensity would help if it was either louder or if you just play with EQ and making him brighter than that guitar. Right now, the guitar is just kind of standing in front of the vocal a little bit on stage to me. Um, the toms are of the drums. you got a great drummer there, and I feel like the toms are more exciting than the rest of the kit throughout the whole mix. So there's a big feature on the toms, and I know that he's playing a lot on there, but when we get to the backbeat and we need to kind of hear that popping out, the snare is not quite as exciting as like all that energy that was going in the toms. So just uh, look for that and look for like the, the center punch of the kick in the snare. Um, I had uh, the fill going into the chorus after the tom breakdown needs to be huge before the woo. Okay, so it's not going into a chorus. It goes into like more of that tom section. But you have like a middle point and there's like a big fill and like, a, you know, he hits on the snare and everything. That fill needs to like explode because it's it's the break for us from going from the joka joka, you know, from the tom thing that you're playing, that pattern. And then he does that fill, make that huge. And then when the singer yells, woo, you know, like it's actually going to be exciting because the drummer was just like the drummer's, you know, excitement should have made the singer say woo or whatever. So why is the singer yelling woo at that point? It's because the drummer just played a badass fill. But if the fill doesn't like crack out of the speakers and have a ton of excitement, the singer might not say woo. So just support that with it. Um, I thought you did a great job bringing up the subdivision on the hats and the right speaker on the last section. That was really cool. Very important. Subdivisions are, in drums specifically, so important. And it's something that gets lost in a lot of mixes where like the drummer is giving you the time and the drive of the song and it gets buried by mix tricks sometimes, and uh, you did a great job keeping that out there. Uh, the bass guitar felt like I was missing the mid-range of it, and it was getting lost. Now, in the last section, it came out to play, and it was sounding good, but at other parts in the mix, I felt like I wasn't hearing that, and it was probably because you were making some space for those toms, but um, that's all speculation, ATN. I don't know. But anyway, great job. I love the song. That's a great band. I hope that you're having fun mixing it because it's killer. Uh, one note about version 12, don't be discouraged by the number. And if that number is happening, maybe I'm projecting here, but if that number is happening to discourage you, find a different naming convention. Um, I, you know, sometimes like my naming convention is if I do a mix and I'm going to go do a car test, I don't call it 1.0. I might call it like 0.9 or something like that. Like it's a, it's a decimal version because I haven't sent it off to the client yet. Once I send it off to the client, it becomes a 1.0. If I do a revision after I send it to the client, but I'm not sending it to the client, that's a dot one number. So it might be 1.1 or 1.8, whatever. And then when I send it to the client a second time, then it becomes a 2.0. So that's a way that I just kind of like, you know, nomenclature or whatever. But yeah, anyway, don't be discouraged. If you need to take a break from the song, just walk away from it for a couple days, sit down in front of your speakers, if you had to open up Pro Tools or something else to listen to it, shut your screen off, hit play, take out a notepad, and write down all of your thoughts. Those are your notes. Do those notes, close the session, come back, listen to it. If you don't have more notes, go try it out in the car or whatever. Uh, hope that that helps. Very good job. I loved it. Uh, 
Oh, and we also, we have these notes over here. These are notes that the um, user can write to their fellow mix tankers. <laughs> and uh, this is a song I recorded last October with my band. I'm not used to mixing real instruments as I mainly use virtual ones. I'm pretty happy with this mix, but I know there's a lot to improve. I'm all ears, ATN. Uh, good thing for a mixer is to be all ears. Wah, wah. Uh, no, I think that you're doing great. So yeah, keep it, keep it up, and I hope that that helps. Okay, we're going to go on to the next song here um let's see what we got i see you guys in the youtube uh chat there good to see you kenneth uh, the alien is back from saturn mike gornsby i saw that picture that you put in the pure mixers facebook group um guys if you're not in there go over to if you're on facebook and you can you can get past facebook type in pure mixers join our facebook group there's a lot of great conversations happening in there all time we have you know real-time updates flying through from anything that we're doing um you know notifications about stuff like this and all that so make sure you jump into that group and go check out mike ornsby's um studio layout that he's working on i was just looking at that before we went live here and it looks pretty dope so uh it looked like you had maybe three different people running studios in there and there yeah it looks looks like a fun place i want to come visit Okay, um, good to see you, Prime Time. Happy New Year. Sean Wait. happy New Year. Mike Conway, good to see everybody. Okay, uh, let's dive in. <laughs> ATN says, I have no problem with the number. Good for you. I have a problem with numbers. Totally projecting on you. All right, let's get to our next song, and that is going to be from Gordy, I believe, from Gord. And it's called The Situation. That's Lack of Gravity on YouTube. Everybody at Lack of Gravity. And uh, tell them what you think of the song. Here we go. When I came into this place I was looking around Then I came across the the band was playing something different The band floor was a buzz When I asked just what was happening I heard just what it was Now I know the situation Yeah, I know the situation That I'm into That I'm into Loving you Feeling my feet were moving, this was something new. If I live to tell about it, I wanna be with you. Now I know the situation, yeah, I know the situation that I'm into, that I'm into loving you. Close my eyes, my mind is closed. You do just what she says.
Awesome, Gord. That's a uh, user lack of gravity in YouTube. Everybody, Adam, tell them what you think. Um, sweet song. This is great. Uh, and I hear I'm going off of memory from, you know, last year. It was all the way back there in last year, but I'm going off of memory from some of your other songs. And I, I feel like I'm hearing a progression on, on uh, some of the mixing stuff here. Um, so great job. It's sounding really cool. The, um, yeah, I, I think a lot of it sounds really awesome and I love the song and the, uh, the melody on that I'm into, um, that's beautiful. I love, you know, the harmonic structure of everything that's going on there. Uh, okay. So a couple comments, um, snare feels very forward to me and, um, it's one of the most important players in the track according to the mix. So, uh, one thing to think about always when you're mixing, and um, this one's probably obvious, but you're always kind of thinking about like, who are the important players? Who are the people that drive the song? In this case, the snare is a big part of that. Who drives the song? Who provides the harmonic structure for the song? So in this case, there's piano, there's organ, there's guitar. All of those guys are telling us what the harmonic foundation of the song is. The drums are doing the rhythm. So that train beat, very important. Makes sense that you want it to be up front. Uh, what I'm hearing from it is uh, it's making all of the harmonic information be a little bit more receded in the mix. And in a song like this, to me, where the vocals are, they're telling a story, as I've noticed a lot of your songs do, um, they, uh, they need the harmonic structure to be there to support a nice, loud kind of vocal bed if that makes sense. So it just kind of needs to be there along with the rhythm section to make everything, you know, feel harmonically pleasing. So I would take a look at like where some of those instruments are and um, if the balance is there and supporting all of those things. The, uh, the background vocal where you have the call and answer thing, um, uh, at 128, you have a spread on it. And um, it's, it's a little wide for my taste, but like, you know, I'm growing, I'm trying to get used to all the width and everything. And, uh, I hear a lack of, um, diction, if you will, like from, from the effect that's happening on it. So it's a little bit hard to understand the lyric that's happening there. And because of the importance of the lyrics in the song, and because it's a call and answer, I can hear the answer very clearly, but the call, which is the effect, um, I didn't quite make out the lyrics on it. So on something like that, you might consider doing, if you want to keep that spread effect, which is really cool, um, you might consider doing like putting that on an aux uh, and then having some of the dry in there, maybe up the center, just a hair. Um, and you could still apply, you know, if it's like a rotary effect or something like that that you're doing to it, you could still put some of that effect on there, but maybe try filling in the center with that a little bit. See if that helps um, or just bring down some of the modulation or play with that effect a little bit and make sure that that lyric is still nice and clear. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the biggest thing on it was like the harmonic instruments for me. Um, those need to just kind of come forward. I didn't feel the kick very much, which isn't a huge deal. Uh, the snare feels a bit loud and forward to me. Um, and then other than that, I felt like the, the high mid range was kind of jumping out. So on the vocals, on some of the words, they would pop forward in the speakers a little bit, um, and just kind of poke out of the mix. And some of the instruments did that as well throughout it. Uh, you mentioned in your comments, um, this version has no compressor on the mix bus, just the Ampex tape machine and the limiter. Just had to tweak up the limiter hair to match up my volume. Uh, I've also taken out more mid-range, this time the acoustic guitar, less compression on the piano, slightly more de on the female singer and less bottom end on the effect voice and the bridges. Okay, cool. So this is one you probably had on here and some people have commented on it. Uh, it does feel like there's no compressor on the mix bus, and I wonder if maybe it was benefiting a little bit from that. Um, just as people, like, if anybody ever watches any, like, cryptocurrency videos on YouTube, the first thing everybody says is, like, I'm not a financial advisor. Um, everything should always be taken with a grain of salt, right? Like, my comments, any comments that you get on any, you know, forum or anything, too, like, make sure that, you know, when you try these things that you do like them, you say that you like the mix better, so that's cool. Um, I think that this mix would benefit either from some more individual compression on some of the elements to keep them from kind of jumping out of the speakers or mix bus compression, just a hair to kind of keep things parked in a little bit. But that might be contrary to something that you've heard already. 
and this could all be getting very frustrating. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So I hope that that is useful, um, Gord. And thanks for submitting. I always enjoy listening to your stuff on here. That's great. Uh, let me know if you have more questions and, and we'll get to them. Um, Garrett in the chat asks, uh, how do you feel about LCR in conjunction with depth? Great question, Garrett. Um, I think the uh, LCR panning is a super cool and very uh, energetic way to do things. Um, anytime that there's like a rule, like I can only pan this 100 left, 100 right, or right down the middle, any kind of rule like that, like restricting yourself to it, if you want to move something in, just move it in. You know, um, I feel like there's a lot of canvas in there to play with. And I really like, this is a, you know, personal preference thing. And this is everybody finds their own style. And like CLA loves LCR and kills it with that stuff. That doesn't mean he never pans anything in the, you know, down into the um, anything less than 100 and more than zero. Uh, we have a mixing video with Chris on the site. You guys should check that out. It's awesome. We have a couple on there. Uh, Daughtry, there's, um, he makes lifeboats. There's a couple CLA videos on there. But he's big into LCR, so that'd be a good one to look at. Um, I really like point source kind of things. So I like when something is like, not necessarily so dry that it doesn't take up any space, but I like a mono point source and I like knowing like it's coming from right there. That's really cool. And there's just so much information in the canvas like to me that is is great there. As it relates to depth, um, I find it harder to create depth a little bit, uh, when it's LCR like that. However, because there's that, you know, sort of space that's being somewhat left alone, it's not hundred percent left alone, obviously, but between the, you know, the center and the sides, sometimes you can get some really cool stuff happening in that, you know, empty space, uh, with, with different effects and everything too. So, um, I think that you can totally achieve depth in LCR and it's awesome. Somebody else asked, uh, somewhere up here, where is it? Here we go. Sean Walt or Sean Wait, will Mark do Atmos mixes in 2023? I am going to do Atmos mixes in 2023. Uh, I am totally jumping down the rabbit hole and I have been having conversations about speakers. We'll see if I jump down that far in the rabbit hole, but I'm looking at it for sure and uh, pretty excited about it. Okay. Cool. Let's uh, let's move on. We'll pick another song here. I'm going to look through the YouTube chat first. And again, if you're just joining us, put your username and the song, your peer mix username and the song that you submitted to Mixtank in the chat. If you're really just joining us for the first time and you're wondering, how do I get a mix on here? We are at puremix.net. Go up to Mixtank up there or puremix.com. We can do that now too. Uh, and you can if you're a, a member of pure mix you can submit a mix on there and then we'll we'll get to it just let me know in the chat that you did okay um looking for my next song here and we are going to check out mike conway common thread 2 here we go all right here we go
Nice. The first thing I'm going to talk about is that last snare hit. Let's check that out. That decay on there is awesome. Bring it up. That's super cool. Make a moment out of that. I love that. Um, very cool. Like you timed it great, and uh, I'd love to like hear that be the period on this on the whole song. You know, um, how is everything else ending right there? Yeah, I mean, even the bass could potentially just like hard stop on that four. You know, four. Yeah, on the four, and you just hear the tail of the reverb ending the song. That'd be really cool. Uh, very neat. Okay, awesome. Your notes on this are, uh, okay, hopefully this moves the right direction in response to comments. So this is a mix you've already submitted. Um, and this is your new version of it. Uh, tried a different bass track. Yes, that bothered me too. And slightly less thick sound. Cut some boxy sound across the drums. More crack on the snare. More tied in guitar sounds. And some renegotiation of guitar relationships. Negotiations, huh? All right. I don't know what you had to give up, but... I hope that they went in your favor. Um, took hair off the vocal and some tweaks there. All in all, hoping to improve over the last in some small increments. Awesome. I haven't heard your previous mix, but this is super cool. Uh, this is like totally something that I would listen to any day of the week. I love indie rock stuff um, like this, and this is so my background. So love it. Great song. Uh, great job. Really yeah, the guitar riff that goes out throughout the song and everything, it, it's awesome. Um, so I have, like, a lot of my thoughts are going to be in relation to the style of the mix. Um, so the uh, the snare feels, for example, like, it feels a little dark to me, and it, uh, you said you put some more crack on it. So it doesn't feel bad, though. Um, and I think it's a stylistic thing where, like, you know, records that are in this vein... Uh, they don't have like big sounding, massive, perfectly recorded with 27 mics or three or whatever, but um, they don't have like, you know, amazing sounding hi-fi drums. Uh, you're just looking for like the crack and the punch and the push, but not necessarily like the big hi-fi sound. Um, and I was thinking like the snare actually might be cool, but then you just kind of need to tailor things around that that direction so for example um maybe the kick could be a little bit more lo-fi to fit the rest of the tones that are going on in the song because there's some other stuff in here that's it's all stylistic it's the guitar tones that you chose it's where you put the tone knob all of those things how you played the part um so i would i would kind of lock into that and and make that the thing and to make the kick more lo-fi my suggestion would be that if you brought some of the low end out of it and just went for more of the mid-range punch of the kick drum that might feel cool and more in the vein of the style um broken social scene is uh, a, a favorite band of mine um and none of their stuff is like perfectly mixed recorded however you would gauge that whatever that means um but uh that could be like a cool reference for this kind of thing uh and i'm thinking like um i'm not going to be able to think of the name but it's the one with the red album cover somebody in the chat help me out i really uh something about the people i don't know somebody help me out uh okay so with that in mind um the vocal uh you said that you took a little hair off the vocal it lacks a little bit of body to me and it's mostly kind of popping out in the 2 to 4K range. So it's getting transient there. It's coming out of the speakers, poking my ear a little bit. Uh, and that's the kind of thing that, um, since everybody listens to music on these things these days, um, you know, these little these little guys that stick in your ear and they just poke you at 2 and 4K. Actually, the new ones, um, I do have to say, like the new generation ones are pretty good. These guys poke you at 2 to 4K, which looks like the same case, but it's different. Um, they poke you with two to four K. So that's the kind of thing that like, you know, somebody listening on, on some earbuds that are a little bit harsh in that area, they're going to get kind of assaulted by that vocal in that range. Um, one way to kind of hear that stuff, like without, you know, there, there's a number of ways to go after it. There's specific compressors that are like really good at grabbing that kind of thing, or like how you set the attack on a certain compressor can grab that kind of stuff or how you side chain the compressor, all of that. But without saying like, go compress your vocal, um, what I would do instead is like, if you have something like fab filters, like Pro-Q2 or 3, uh, or the stock EQ and, and Pro Tools, and I think that Logic EQ will let you do this. Uh, if you can solo the range, um, 
that you're listening to in the band of an EQ, where that thing is focused, if you can solo it up, just park it around like between one and 5K and just kind of listen to what's happening there. And you'll hear like syllables of words or um, little pieces of words that are jumping. You can hear it without doing this too, like in this uh, example. Listen for syllables of words that are popping forward and coming out of the speakers or maybe zinging your ear, um, depending on what you're listening on and all that. But uh, listen for that kind of stuff. And then once you've kind of like honed in on it specifically, like by soloing the band to kind of get it in your, you know, in your being, if you will, um, then you could go in without it being soloed up like that and tweak it around so that the vocal sits in a nice place, doesn't jump out on certain words, certain phrases, um, and, you know, see if you can get a better balance with it. I felt like it could use a little bit more body, but play around with it. If you solve that two to four K thing that might, you know, fix the issue or, the other inverse way of that is if you brought more body into the signal, that stuff might not jump out as much because you would have a more even kind of sound to it. And uh, again, I'm thinking about that like thing that Fab was saying, you know, if um, if the listener is right here, you know, and your back wall is right here, uh, every once in a while the vocal, like the high mid, is kind of like poking forward like that. Not necessarily the bottom of it, but if if the vocal is like slanted like this and you boost up the mid range and you kind of like end up getting a little bit more of a straight standing instead of a hunchback <laughs> vocal is leaning forward. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, the other thing to watch out for is just low mid resonance in different instruments. Um, same thing as that two to four K thing. Just listen for anything that starts sounding like a resonant feedback. Um, and and see if you can deal with it with that kind of thing you know there's all kinds of tools to deal with stuff like that like soothe um but if it's, most of the time it's something that happens once uh surfer eq is another one that's really great at uh kind of like finding a harmonic and then tracking it and and keeping it in balance or whatever but um dynamic eq all of those things but uh i've talked before about fixing a permanent problem with a temporary solution doesn't work or you know fixing a temporary problem with the permanent solution doesn't work so permanent solution would be something like oh every once in a while there's a resonance at 160 so i'm going to dip 60 b out of 160 and then leaving it parked there it could just be happening whenever they go to the a or something like that so um, you want to be intentional and maybe you automate that band in or you use something like a dynamic eq that's only going to duck it whenever there's a issue there um there's some bass low end uh, that feels like it could be lurking up and stealing some of the punch of your kick drum. I would check that out. But, you know, once you kind of shape the low end of the kick, if you end up doing that, you might resolve some of that issue anyway. Uh, then you also would want to pay attention to the low end of the bass and make sure they're behaving well. Uh, 258, those single note guitar leads, I felt like those could pop forward in the mix. Um, the, you know, it, like the energy comes up there. I felt like the entire band lifted uh, and the guitar sounds really great in there. But... I had to like lean in to listen to it. And, uh, you know, I've talked about too on, if you got a band on stage or something, maybe the guitar player would step, you know, forward a little bit. Maybe he's not going to like do a guitar slide into all the girls in the front row because of the kind of band it is, but, um, he might take a step forward or, you know, he'd do something to let the audience know, like, this is where the solo is coming in. And, uh, in the mix, I don't feel it doing that. So that would just be one of those things where it's like, who is going to get the spotlight right now and then doing whatever you can do in the mix to point the spotlight on him so that it just kind of highlights the part and brings it front and center so the listener knows it's guitar time or <laughs> whatever so cool uh hope that that helps mike thank you for submitting i love the song and i think that you're on a really great path with it hope that that's useful okay next up is studio jaman lullaby for creation uh, guys, if you're just joining us, I'm trying to get to all of the uh, people that are with us here live. Put your username, put the song that you submitted into the live chat. If you've never seen a, a mix tank live before, this is puremix.net, mix tank live. Mix tank is a service on pure mix where you can submit your mixes. It's like a think tank for, for music and our community comments on it, drops comments. I'm here every other Monday, 2.30 p.m. to give some feedback live. So, uh, also, here's your reminder for one hour in to smash all of the buttons, as the kids say, down below. It helps us keep going. We need you. Okay, I'm going to hit play and stop talking. Everybody's going to like that. He's
Mike, I love your stuff. Thank you. I say this every time, but it's it's always such a journey, and I just appreciate it so much. It's uh, yeah, it's just it's so unique, and it's always a journey. Great, great work as always. Um, I I want to read because the screen capture kind of sucks, to be frank. Um, I guess you can kind of read the text, but uh, I wanted to read one of the things from his um his comments over on the right here. And that is that he said, my objective was to creating a story song. This song is created uh, utilizing a Anishina Beck, sorry if I'm butchering that, songwriting technique called song lines, where songs and melodies are created directly, directly from contours of the land. I combined Anishina Beck tradition with modern song ready to explore my musicality with Eurocentric and modern creative perspectives. This traditional meets modern approach allows one to directly unify one's art by musically mapping melodies and rhythms of the land through landscapes and horizons, from mountains and valleys to the cityscapes and skyscrapers. In the second movement, the lullaby is sung mostly in English, but there's some indigenous words too, and then he goes on to explain what those are, which I'm not going to offend or embarrass anybody, like myself, uh, by trying to um, uh, pronounce those. Uh it is my intention to eventually mix this as fully immersive, but for now, I hope you can immerse yourself in this piece that is still very much a work in progress. I uh, hope you like this new offering for New Year 2023, which is uh, which I hope is full of creation and much love. Cool. Mike, thank you very much. And um, uh, yeah, as always, it's great. I know that you have uh, a, a big, you know, kind of direction toward immersive mixing, and I hear a lot of that um, what you're going for in stereo is that immersion. And, uh, it's, it's awesome. Um, there's some things that we can talk about here, but, uh, overall, I, I know that like, I would almost say like, you're not binding yourself to like typical, you know, stereo convention or stereo mixing conventions. And you're just, you're going for something and anything that, um, you know, we say as opposed to that is like, I, there's some like things that I think that you can do to improve clarity and stuff like that. And we'll talk about those, but, um, I love that you're pushing, pushing rules in a way that like, I hear your intention from track to track that you submit. And I hear that you're going for something. Uh, and I just want to say, keep going for it. And that's awesome. Um, you know, like it's, yeah, not that these aren't, you know, great stereo mixes, but for example, uh, we'll just jump into some comments here. So like the, um, the piano that was happening uh yeah the piano is very wide in the first movement and 
um you've seen a lot of these before and i always kind of complain about stereo widening and the phasiness that happens and uh some of that stuff and um but i know like from the stuff that you've done that you're going for a wraparound thing here and you're you're finding ways to achieve it in stereo it actually doesn't annoy me on this one the way that like phase stuff usually kind of gets me it is phasey and i have some of those same feelings but i also know that there's like an intention of wrapping around you and um you're kind of being forced into the stereo format when your goal i believe is you know to get into atmos and, and really kind of like have that canvas to play with so anyway i'm babbling but um the piano I, I hear where you're going, but the piano does feel loud to me and it's covering up the rest of the music that's happening. So um, for the first time, I'm going to say maybe don't bring the piano in and keep your widening stuff on there. But I do think that the volume needs to come back. And if you're, I forget if you're mixing on headphones, I think I've asked you this before, but um, uh, if you're on headphones, it's harder to hear when you know, something that wide is probably too loud, but uh, I think that the volume needs to come down on that so we hear some of the other stuff that's going on. And then uh, the comments that, you know, Tom Foolery puts in are always amazing. Um, there's there's some masking stuff that's going on, some uh, low mid, um, low mid kind of causing some resonance and some mud and masking up other instruments and all that. So I think that there's some work to do to kind of like find individual spaces for, for these things. Um, Remember too that uh, in with immersion and with depth, immersion coming from depth, um, with depth you have to have something close in order to have something far, which you have the loud piano, but it's so wide that it doesn't feel front and center. Uh, so yeah, I would just um, consider cleaning up some of that stuff, working on the balance of those things. Again, like where's the spotlight gonna be? The vocalist that you have on this is absolutely gorgeous and beautiful and like yeah great great performance um yeah uh okay you say that you're mixing on slate vsx yeah so it could be hard to hear some of this stuff too um and uh that could be a big part of the comment there so the second movement i felt like the organ did a similar thing to the piano on the first movement and uh those are really kind of the two things that that come to mind. And other than that, I, I agree with um, a lot of the comment that was already here. Uh, I think that Sonic Science's comments are basically the same. Um, I know that somebody in the chat said something about hearing some clicks and pops and stuff like that. So listen for that. Uh, I think one way to approach this might be too, if you mute the piano work on everybody inside of the mix, um, finding some separation, some clarity, and then, you know, figuring out your, your spacing for the piano and all that. But yeah, mostly I think if you kind of like find out where some of that low mid stuff is coming from, either, you know, add some brilliance to those things or, or pull some of the mid back and, and just find a better EQ balance between those things. But, uh, I'm so excited to see what happens when you get into your new space with Atmos and everything. I think that you are going to have, such a freaking good time so i'm excited about your future um keep it up mike it's awesome thank you so much for submitting as always and i hope that that's useful feedback awesome okay uh let's see so um michael daniel is asking is anyone on spotify so guys if you have music on spotify let michael know and everybody in the chat uh we've talked before too about um we need to get like an awesome playlist going of everybody that's been on here uh, doing mixed tank stuff once all these releases are out because there's some really great music. Okay, the next one is from Jamie O'Keefe. If you've never, let's check it out. This is supposed to be pop. Uh, or it is pop and track status advanced mixed. And he says, remove some mud as advised, raise the tambourine and volume and put and some other stuff. Put a slight high end on the master. Slight shelf. And is it too bright? Let's find out. Going into HD mode. Here we go. Growing old together has always been fine No, we don't hold each other When you've changed your mind And silence can speak louder than words Don't you know? When there was only ever 
One thing on our minds, we would try and finish each other's lines. Cause now we're just two words apart. Jamie, there's a really interesting texture on the guitars. I'm wondering what that is. Um, can you let me know in the chat if there was something you did to add that like kind of grainy texture to the guitars? Don't you know If you never had a broken heart Then how would you know Time apart Is all that we know are you scared and all alone in bed with thoughts in your head if you never had a broken heart i want to point out some things as we go on this one um so the reverb timing is very good on this i i like where the decay is landing especially in relation to the part uh i am hearing the tail over top of the vocal not over top of it like it's Sorry, like it's much louder than the vocal, but um, it's clouding things up a little bit. It's still there. I would consider either riding that fader, uh, you know, with your fingers, not the mouse, um, and, you know, bringing the volume down when the vocal comes back in or doing like a side chain compressor kind of thing if the vocal singing, have it duck the reverb a little bit just to get it out of the way and let the vocal kind of be forward. Here's where I hear that. In your head. Never had a broken heart. One more time. Getting all alone in bed with thoughts in your head. If you never had a broken heart. Yeah, like if you never had, uh, the reverb on had is going over top of broken heart, that kind of thing. So um, just watch out for that. See if there's something you can do to kind of clean that up and uh, let the lead vocal be the lead vocal, but not lose the amazing timing that you have on the reverb. I think it sounds great. Uh, last thing you guys can listen to when I hit play again, we're going to keep going, but there's a vocal edit that happens right after that line. You hear the lip smack and the um, kind of brightness of it. Uh, so that kind of stuff got to clean it up it, it like um you know in movies we're always trying to suspend disbelief right like a director always wants the the viewer to be completely lost for two hours watching this movie even if it's the new star wars movies that it's impossible to get lost in because they're awful but anyway uh watch out for vocal edits here we go if you never had a broken heart let's rewind and take Things that we've done So we can try and pretend We were just having fun Silence can speak louder than words Don't you know? If you never had a broken heart Then how would you know? Time apart all that we know are you scared and all alone in bed with thoughts in your head if you never had a broken heart Awesome. Um, Jamie, let us know what you're using for monitors in the in the chat there while I kind of yap at you here. Um, so, yeah, 
I can tell that like the vocal was recorded very, very well. It's a great voice too. Um, the the tones are all good. I saw you said uh, UAD Fender Tweed on the uh, guitar thing. Um, all of that sounds really great. And the guitar solo section here, uh, that guitar tone sounds really good to me and properly kind of balanced. It sounds like a guitar is supposed to. But a lot of the other stuff in the mix uh, feels, you, you said that you put a slight high shelf on the master. Is it too bright? Definitely not too bright. Um, there's a lot of low end mud and and resonance and stuff going on in here that's making the whole thing very very cloudy, and it's got to be a monitoring problem um, because I think that the stuff is recorded very well and I think that you know this stuff for sure from what I can tell on here, but I don't think that you're being told the truth by whatever you're monitoring on. So I'm curious um, what you. Have. So Yamaha HS sevens and um, yeah, so it could it could come down to like a room thing um, where you're placing the speakers in the room. There's there's a lot of like variables involved there, uh, but something isn't showing you the bottom of the record, like the low end, the sub information. The kick drum is very very big, very subby, very um, very bloated, and uh, the uh, the snare drum as well. There's a ton of sub information on the snare drum that I was hearing, and um, some high pass filtering will help that. But I think that there's something else going on where, like, I don't know if you're boosting that stuff because you're not hearing it and you're trying to get body. You're also asking if it's too bright, and my takeaway is that this is very very dark, so not at all. Uh, so I think that something's going on that's um, not not telling you the truth, uh, but things like that reverb timing and you know there's a lot of other great things that are happening in the mix that um it's it's not you baby <laughs> it, it's possibly your monitoring uh yeah i i think that you have a lot of great great stuff going on inside of the mix so um it's hard to comment on balances and stuff when the low end is is super bloated like that because uh it's not really a level thing it's like a shape thing um to it so advice for getting around some of that um the headphones are great for hearing low end. You need a pair that you can trust. You also need to know your speakers very well. So um, it is, you know, some people say like it's possible to mix inside of a swimming pool if you've been in the swimming pool for long enough. Meaning like if you know the sound of the swimming pool that your speakers are in or whatever, you could you could figure it out over time. Like your ears will adapt and like very, very good acousticians have told me that. Uh, and, you know, which isn't like a selling point for them because they'd be like, well, you, you can mix inside of a swimming pool if you get used to it, which is true. Uh, so reference mixes are your friend in this case. Um, you want to listen to stuff and see if your low end's on, on par with theirs. If things aren't feeling quite as defined, it's probably because your your low end's like slowing down the speaker and the reproduction of it. So um, that could be that could be a lot of it. Oh, Jamie, that's your voice. Hard to mix your own voice. No, you're fine with that. Your voice is amazing. Great singing. Very awesome singing. Um, yeah, man, you have a great voice. There's uh, some background vocals that are lost in this last section here, so I'm going to play a little bit of that. Hard, and how would you know Time apart Is all that we know How you skating all alone in bed thoughts in your head yeah so doing like a high pass filter getting rid of some sub information on on all that stuff is going to help clear up the bottom of the mix and everything um those background vocals that's going to be a stylistic choice thing if you want those to be audible or if you want them kind of tucked in the back right now they're a little unintelligible uh like we're losing the diction on them because we can't hear them super well but um that could be a thing uh you say that you're you've been trialing sonar works Things like sonar works are great. Uh, they're friends of ours. We love them. Um, you have to be careful with them. And I know that sonar works has a lot of built-in features to prevent this, but they're usually compensating for things by, you know, say that you have the the thing that's common in almost every American bedroom studio, which is a dip at eighty to one hundred, right? And that's caused because of a four foot ceiling. We generally sit four feet off of the ground, or our ears are generally four feet off of the ground, which means that we're right within the first mode in a, um, in a vertical space. Uh, so you tend to have this giant canyon as a result around like 80 to 100 hertz. That's eight foot ceilings in almost, you know, every American bedroom or whatever can cause that kind of thing. Not that that's your case, but, um, you know, in that case, Sonarworks would attempt to say it's a 10 dB dip, which is 
not uncommon for that kind of room, um, you know, it, it's going to try and do a 10 dB peak there. And then suddenly your speakers are pumping out 10 dB extra from 80 to 100 hertz. And like, holy cow, you know, um, they built in limiters to protect your speakers and stuff. But uh, generally, you want to find physical ways to deal with that stuff and make sure that your speakers are placed properly in the room. There's all kinds of resources about that online. Um, so I'm not going to bore everybody, but general ones, 33% back in the room, centered in the room, uh, you know, shoot down the long way if you can, not down the, the short way. And um, yeah, uh, if you have any questions, marketpuremix.net, hit me up, happy to talk. Uh, great job though, very cool. Mixing your own voice is very hard. Mixing your own music is very hard. So kudos to you on that. Okay, let me look for our next song here. Thank you for submitting, Jamie. Very cool. All right. Um, there is one from... Guys, if I've missed you, let me know. We'll hit it. I'm going to hit Primetime Robots next. And this is a David Crosby song. So hopefully we don't get kicked off of YouTube, but we're going to try it out. Things we do for... That word. Uh, not popping up. Let me try looking for prime time. Prime time, make sure uh, your track's still up there. I'm not pulling it up for some reason. Let me try GV mix. GVF mix. GV mix. I just saw a Alana's thing there. I don't know what's going on with the search right now. Uh, yeah, verify it's still up there for me if you could. Uh, prime time, and we'll we'll come back to it. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see here. So next one, Mom would say, let's hit that one. We got about forty five minutes left here, so let's see how many we can get to. Mama, I would say from Chianti. Or Alan Atomic on YouTube. Okay, here we go. Thanks for submitting, man. Uh, this mix was done in 2003. Does it hold up to today's sound or did I miss it? Thanks, TC. Well, you didn't miss it. You mixed it 20 years ago. If you hit it, now that's going to be amazing. <laughs> here we go. New York City on a steamy Saturday night. Lay on him a bed in the welfare hotel. This is for prime time.
That's a song. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Mike Ornsby put it really well. He says, uh, what do you say? Uh, I'd say you hit it. Good music stands the test of time. So if you joined in the middle of that one, this mix was done in 2003, and um, our uh, person uh, who submitted it was wondering if it stood the test of time. And I would say, I would say so. Uh, this is from Alan Atomic, written by my wife, Lana, who's singing, and her friend, Monty. Great job, guys. Uh, man, she's got a voice. It's great. Um, yeah, awesome work. I don't know if uh, if you're recalling this to um, to tweak it at all or anything. Uh, I had like some I have some thoughts about it, but uh, overall, like great, and the energy comes across. It's an exciting mix. It's really really fun to listen to. Uh, I feel like I'm watching you guys live, and it's you know I'm getting the excitement of a performance and everything. So really really cool. Great job. Um, I'll just point out a, a couple little things that, you know, maybe it'd be good to tweak and um, maybe it's just good for learning if uh, if you're going forward with other stuff. So around here, around two minutes, I felt like the hi-hat and the overhead, were, the overhead were a little bit loud. So let me just listen to see why. Okay, so one thing one thing I want to bring everybody's attention to here. Um, so listen to the brightness of the hi hat in context of the brightness of the voice. So this is this is another one of those good cases of I do think that they're a little bit probably a little loud. You probably need to bring the fader back a little bit. But even if you do that, there's a there's a tonal shift between how bright the overheads are telling us that the mix is and how bright the vocal is telling us that the mix is. So let's listen. Close that close, I also hear a little bit of a phase thing between the left and right overhead. Um, they're just a little bit wide smeared, but overall great. Um, but yeah, anyway, what I wanted to call attention to is like the, the symbols are so bright, the vocal, it makes the vocal sound dark. And that's all about contrast between elements, right? Like you can't have something loud without something that is quiet. Actually, that's not true. If I just soloed up a vocal and I cranked up my speakers, that'd be pretty damn loud. I don't know what I'm doing here, guys. I'm going to go. I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, the the contrast between it tells us that this is a dark vocal. I think it's a dark vocal in general, but um, that's like the one comment I have about the whole mix. But yeah, that was one spot that I thought would be a good thing to kind of compare on. Um, another one... 
Another one is uh, around 235, the guitars and the organ are on top, and I can't hear some of the words. So um, if I focus in around here, we'll take a listen. But on like words like ship, she jumps out a little bit. Um, she's not being held back by the compressor at that point, and she kind of jumps out, and we hear ship. You know, so listen to that word. And I'm not saying to compress that because I like some stuff like that. It jumps out and it grabs you, and it's like wake up. You know, that's pretty cool. Uh, in this case, I think it's really cool. The guitars and the organ sound great. This mix is really, really good. Um, so just want to like say that again. Uh, one of the ways like I would deal with it, you know, something very popular today, not as widely known in, in 2003, parallel compression. If you had a parallel smashed vocal that you were bringing up underneath that, it would nudge the whole vocal forward, allow us to hear it a little bit better. And then if uh, some of the low mid in the vocal or if some top was added on the vocal, I feel like all that clarity would be there. But um, this is a phenomenal mix and my mixes did not sound like this in 2003. There were mixes that happened in 2003 and they did not sound like that. Um, very, very cool job. Uh, okay, so um, any other stuff? Uh, oh, low end rumble at 5.30. Um, this is a great example so uh i would have you know done some high pass filtering on this if we listen to the vocal by itself listen to the sub information listen for rumble um and that's going to tell us a lot about like why the vocal's so thick in the rest of the song and and all of that so let the good lord kiss your blues out yeah so uh, the G's and ble the B on blues. Let the good Lord kiss your blues out to see. And also hear a vocal edit right here. And let the good Lord. Yeah, let the good. And let the good Lord kiss your blues. So, I mean, that's that's another thing. Like, uh, if I were mixing this now, I would be high-pass filtering up, getting rid of all the rumble, adding some top to the vocal just to make it a little bit more clear and, and intelligible and maybe a little exciting. Um, but, yeah, I think that this is awesome. Very, very good job on it. Uh, very cool. The better you mix, the better. Oh, yeah, somebody's asking about mastering. Karen, Happy New Year. Good to see you. Awesome. Oh, Alan, you used a ribbon, a ribbon mic on this. That explains everything. Yeah, seriously, it really does. Uh, it sounds like a ribbon mic. And um, ribbons take EQ very, very well in my experience. Uh, that's one of the best things about ribbon mics for me is that you can crank on an EQ and it doesn't get all weird and phasey and um, harsh sounding or anything like that. They take EQ very nicely. So this is one of those things where if you had um, you know, done some shaping like that on a ribbon, it'd be great. And I wouldn't necessarily say like, don't be scared to use ribbons um, because of anything that I'm saying ever, because it's just me. But um, uh, don't be afraid of ribbons. Ribbons are great. And and this vocal could be shaped and all of that stuff. So um, all good. Cool. Thank you for submitting, Alan. Uh, that's awesome. Like, you know, you did this 20 years ago. That's insane. Um, yeah. I'd love to hear one of your current mixes. Do you have another one on Mixed Tank? Let us know. Maybe we'll have some time. We got about 28 minutes, so I got to shut up and keep going here. All right, let me find... Guys, if I have not done your mix yet and you're in the live chat, please put it down in the comments. Uh, I got one from Primetime. Speaking of, I broke out my tape measure for Primetime, so we're going to talk about that in a second here. Uh, so things we do for love. GB. F mix. What am I doing wrong? I should just be able to search by your username too, right? Uh, wait, where'd everything go? Everything's gone. Let me refresh here. Oh no, who am I? Guys, my password's one, two, three, four. Don't write it down. Oh, apparently it's not one, two, three, four. Oh God, what's going on? Guys, it's all falling apart. Okay, hold on a second here. 
Get me back in. I don't know why I got logged out just now. Things are a mystery. Strange things are afoot. Um, guys, if you haven't seen it yet, we have a new version of the website up. Uh, and sometimes things like this are happening because it is a complete overhaul of PureMix, uh, which is a massive undertaking. So let me uh, let me back up here. So uh, I might be on the wrong site. Okay, that's what it was. Great, yeah, um, let me talk about that for a second. This is a big deal for us um, and for you guys as well, and I'll tell you why. Uh, so this is version three of Pure Mix. Uh, that's, that's a big deal. This has been in the making for, I don't know, five years. I think we launched um, 2.0 maybe seven years ago, and we almost immediately started talking about 3.0. And uh, we have an entire team in Bordeaux, of uh, web developers and um, coders and some of the brains behind uh, process.audio and, and Mixtank and MixUp. Um, all of those guys work their tails off in France um, to bring us all of the tools that, that we have and be able to do stuff like Mixtank Live today. Um, but they completely redid Pure Mix. The back end's all new. And one of my favorite things about the new site, I'm also the content manager for Pure Mix, and that means that um, I ha I'm like an encyclopedia of all the videos that are on here. I've seen every single one of those videos at least three times, and that's not a lie because of how many passes I have to do uh, before it gets released. Um, and obviously the editors see them way more, but <laughs> shout out Andrew and Bob. Uh, so one of the cool things on here is um, it, you'll notice that the videos that are being shown right now, the thumbnails for them, they're not all the newest stuff. So it's looking at things like what I've watched, what I haven't watched, uh, what, you know, based off of those things, it's suggesting videos to me. There's a whole bunch of stuff happening in here that's going to keep Pure Mix relevant to you every time that you log in. So you're not just seeing the same thing like in advertising for you know the beatles recording series which by the way guys we just went to abbey road and did a beatles series and it's awesome and it's starting to be released right now um if you're watching that uh episodes four five and six come out this friday one two and three are out now we went to abbey road with ken scott one of the original beatles engineers and we recreated four different eras of the beatles recordings uh arrow one is out now it's being released uh in in three episode chunks as we go so Episodes four, five, and six out this Friday. The mixing episodes will be out in a couple of weeks. I'll keep you posted on that. Um, and then we'll be moving on to Arrow 2 once we wrap up here. But yeah, anyway, if you haven't yet, check out Pure Mix V3. It's amazing. And let's get back to Mix Tank. Uh, it's very cool, though. All right. I'm going to try and search for your song again, Primetime. I got distracted, you know? So let's see. Prime time. There we go. We found it. All right, here we go, guys. This is a song from David Crosby, brought to you by Primetime Robots. Was it something she said? About a dream she had One of those ones That faded so fast You knew it was bad She dreamed That she's losing you I guess it's time there's only so much time Reaching through The fear That's holding her here These are the things These are the things we do
At first it's just fun But love is long A little each day You build it that way It's being around Another set of hands Not what you want It's only That you will Kindle the flame What a great song. That is just an awesome song. Um, I was just looking at Tom Foolery commented on this. Um, Tom's worked with David a number of times now, and he might have even worked on this record. I can't remember if that was before his time. I don't think so. I think he did work on this. But uh, yeah, Tom's a great one to uh, check out the mix. So um, he hit it. He hit my comments on his comments. Um, the uh, the biggest thing to me, I know one of those guitars has a phaser on it that you put on there, and I think that that's super cool. Um, I I really respect that uh, on this song and you did another one. It was um, one of the ones we did a mix contest around, but you did some stuff on there that was definitely different than how the original mix was. And you kind of went for a thing. Um, and I really appreciate that you do that. Um, Joe Ciccarelli in one of the recent mixing contests, he talked about that, like when he got a lot of the Alanis Morissette mixes from us, um, he wished that people had pushed it further and done something different than what he did versus just trying to recreate his mix in the hopes to win a prize. Um, so I like that you did a phaser on one of those guitars and that was super cool. If you didn't do a phaser, tell me, uh, in the chat because we have to talk about phase issues, which we have to talk about anyway. Cause, um, and I know that Sonic science already pointed it out. Um, but I do hear some like weird phasing stuff going from the width of the guitars. Um, and it's an interesting thing because, uh, you talked about in your comments on here that, uh, you like it a little bit more hi-fi. Um, and so that means like it's not just going to sound like a single guitar and David singing and all that stuff. Like you're going to do some things that um, kind of enhance and, um, you know, maybe make it a little bit more Return of the Jedi, but not quite Force Awakens. Because, God, that movie is so freaking bad. It's so bad. It's really bad. Um, sorry. Uh the, you also put, I would adjust the balance slightly with the tilt EQ. I'd lower the low end a little bit, less than a half a dB. Um, I would say like anything like that, like if you have a thought that you would adjust the balance if you were mastering it, you know, then what can you do in the mix to, to hit it now? Um, anytime that I send out a mix, I don't necessarily master it. Uh, there are things that you leave for mastering and maybe, maybe that is a good example of one, but um, is there anything that you could do to get that effect now and one of the things that comes to mind is um like tom talking about the guitars being a hair too boomy um 
that's that's something that maybe that's there isn't a whole lot of low end in the song so that's possibly what you were hearing and maybe you could just go into the guitars and, and take care of it right away uh it's always easier for you to deal with things on an individual level than for a mastering engineer to deal with them in a stereo mix because he'll also be affecting everybody else that's in there like the bass guitar etc cetera, etc cetera. um the DSing thing tom talked about it mustaches i do want to point out that mustaches are the world's weirdest DSer ever um and can you imagine like if you were in a session with david crosby and you're like david you're uh your mustache there it's uh it's really doing a lot of dsing um do you mind if i go get some some trimmers real quick cross can i do that and just see how that goes um tom could let us know how that would go uh not that he's done that but maybe he could let us know um Okay. Awesome. So yeah, great mix again. I, I like a lot of what's going on here. I, again, like I kind of feel like I'd just be repeating more of Tom's comments. So I'm going to, I'm going to hop off of this one, but it's awesome. And to answer your question, prime time, who I believe that we have the same monitors. This is not a lightsaber. Um, although a yellow lightsaber does seem like something they would have used in the most recent star Wars movie. That was freaking awful. It's the one where the emperor comes back out of nowhere. They didn't even tell us he was going to come back. And then suddenly he was back and it was really bad. He was a clone or something like that. I hated that movie. And there were horses. Why were there horses on the star destroyer? But I digress to answer your question. You asked how far I am from my monitors. I am around like 46, 48 inches or something like that. Um, that's something that I've actually played with in this room a lot. And uh, that like, not that anybody would do this, but don't go and like, you know, um, be 48 inches from your monitors because it's something that I had to play with in this room to find the sound that I liked. Originally I had, I have key threes in here and I had them wider and I was missing a lot of like low mid stuff that was happening and kind of what happens when you have speakers, uh, if they're too far apart, um, you end up losing a lot of bottom. Things get a little bit thinner, uh, brighter. Sometimes it's more exciting because they're wide, but then you're not getting quite as much body on the sound. And then if you put them too close, they can be a little bit too boomy and too much low mid and stuff like that. But there's all kinds of different effects that happen just from moving the speakers closer and further away from each other. So it was after a whole lot of like, move them an inch do i like that oh i don't remember let me go back an inch and see if i like that but it was i was doing it by taste um and not with a measurement mic which in the past i had been obsessed with measurement mics and figuring all that stuff out and i got so i burned myself out on it so bad that uh when i got these in here they have some stuff that they're doing for room correction anyway but um when i got these in here i just like put them up and i had them too wide for a little while um and then i moved them in and i was happier and now i'm happy so yeah hope that that helps um oh you said uh sound toys micro shift uh but almost five reverbs on the guitar is cool i watched fab's video 25 times that's up there with me prime time that's awesome nice uh, yes i am a pro member that's hilarious uh okay great um Cool. Always good to see Karen in there. Tell us what you really think, Mark. <laughs> nice. Uh, okay. What else here? Uh, can you, Thomas Kramer, so soul. I'm not going to try and say the rest. So soul. Here we go. All right. I'm going to play this. Here we go. Ooh, firing. Ich will sagen, so 
solo sein, so kann es bleiben. So hab ich es mir gewünscht. Alles passt perfekt zusammen, weil endlich alles stimmt und mein Herz gefangen ist. Thomas, I love this. This is super cool. Um, this is from username Thomas Kramer. Yeah, Thomas, um, great job on this. Uh, I I feel like we listened to this song or one like it earlier that you did with your daughter and your son as well. Um, and great job. Uh, yeah. The, the song is super cool. The cover is really cool. The tones are great. Um, you're children killed it it's very very cool um and kudos to you for doing that with them that's that's amazing it must be really fun for them to like uh to hear that and be able to go through that um i i only have a a few like main comments and it's it's a general comment overall uh with the whole with the whole song um it feels a little bit scooped to me like there's a focus on the bottom and a focus on the top so uh, i believe karen bassett um said uh in there the vo there's some super highs on the voice uh and the voice needs a little taming i would agree with that i think that there's a lot of top um and that the vocals could be cleared up a little bit they're a little bit kind of muffled but there's also a lot of top on them uh, and it just kind of feels like it's got a little bit of a smiley face going on uh which brings me to like a point that i just want to make and this is one that i've been trying to uh improve on my myself and in, in my own mixes is um just like really focusing in on the mid range bottom and top are like they're like ice cream right like you go get a scoop and it tastes amazing and it's it's awesome um but it's like too easy you know it's like too easy to have something amazing like unless you know it's like pecan ice cream or pecan ice cream however you want to say it and i know that there's some crazy person in here in the chat that likes pecan ice cream i'm gonna leave it alone um, but unless it's pecan ice cream and you take a bite of ice cream, it's really, really good. Uh, so low end and, and top end, you know, you start boosting, it feels, feels pretty good. Um, 
until it doesn't. And uh, God is in the mid-range is the point that I want to make there. So um, this feels, again, like it's kind of scooped and we're losing some of the clarity and some of the body. Like the guitars feel a little bit muffled. Um, they don't have like a mid-range presence thing going on. And uh, yeah, just, just basically I feel like there's not enough focus on the mid-range of the track. Karen put that she felt that the kick could use as a little sculpting as well. I think that I agree with that. Like a little high-pass filter might tighten that up, make it a little bit more punchier. Um, but in general, I think like just a, uh, a re-examination of the shape of the record and the tones and like the actual clarity that's happening in the mids would, would be of use here. And um, it's a tricky thing because um, it's also one of those things that can be affected by your room, right? Like if you're not hearing the bass, there are the sub range enough, you can end up overcompensating and that's why you're boosting. Or if you've, you know, I don't know the case for less high end other than like too much treatment, like too much absorption. Um, but if you're not hearing it, you boost it or... Um, you know, if you're hearing too much of it because you don't have any treatment, then you're you're taming it. So, um, I would just say that this needs a little bit more shape in the in the mid range, specifically like a little higher than 400 ish or whatever. Um, but the body of it, you know, 400 2K something. I'm just shouting out numbers, but um, looking looking at that a little bit, I think will help you. And then you know, maybe looking at the bottom the low mids and seeing if there's some cleanup work that you can do on it. But overall, this is really, really great. I think that you did a great job producing this. I think it's awesome that you're doing this with your children and kudos to you. Very awesome. I hope that it helps. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Very cool. All right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mids are pretty amazing. Uh, okay. Book <laughs> Bacon. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, Garrett. Thank you for that. Uh, I see that none of you are stepping forward and admitting that you like pecan ice cream or pecan ice cream. One of you likes pecan ice cream. Got a lot of questions. We need to talk about them, about pecan ice cream. Okay, I'm looking for other songs. Guys, if you're in the chat and you put a song in and I haven't hit it yet, please remind me and drop it in the chat now. Um, I'm looking to see if there's anybody else I missed. Garrett Jones. You've been commenting the whole time and I haven't hit your song yet. I'm so sorry. Garrett Jones. Visceral Knife. Here we go. HD. Hold on, hold on. Mix in the cloud likes pecan ice cream. Karen, a two brute. <laughs> no, we got a better bacon in particular. <laughs> all right, all right. R Mark Gosla just uploaded a track. I'm gonna move on from the pecan ice cream. Pecan ice cream. Somebody help me on my pronunciation. We don't have pecan ice cream in France, and that's why we have our office in France because there's no pecan ice cream or pecan or pecan. Um, oh, ATN says, unfortunately. All right, moving on, moving on. Sorry. Here we go.
The spring on the the snare drum here is really, really cool, Garrett. This is awesome. I, I want to pause because I'm I'm reading through Jared. Jared, I'm sorry. I keep like pausing your track first for the stupid ice cream thing, and now <laughs> that's to talk. But um, uh, one, I'm loving this. Um, so you said over in your notes, currently instrumental version for a demo. I think this is a good first step, though. I feel I may be saturated the tracks on the way in, and I'm not sure if this is okay or not. Looking for objective criticisms regarding the general quality of the tracks, both individually as well as a whole. Uh, as I want to create a dark atmosphere without muddying the soundstage, but admittedly don't have a lot of experience in creating a vibe, more so just clean things up. I wanted to stop this and read that entire paragraph so that I could disagree with you. <laughs> you have um, a lot of experience creating a vibe because you've done it on this track. And uh, the reason I say that is because of your your guitar tone choices. You're going for the surf rock kind of guitar spy thing um, with the spring reverb, the the twangy fender sound thing that's going on not necessarily a fender thing but you know kind of a fender amp thing but um that you yeah everything that you have going on with with those guitars and with the the spring reverb i believe on the snare drum the the tones of the drums all of that stuff is creating a vibe so you said you were looking for objective criticisms my objective criticism is that you have created a vibe here and you've done a great job of it um let's keep going uh the only thing that i'll say so far is the hi-hat back here um is a bit bright comparatively to everything else and uh again contrast is everything so to have something dark um there needs to be something bright but if it's too bright then it's not making it a dark kind of thing or whatever so contrast is good but it's a little bit too bright on the hats and stuff oh, and it also could be a volume thing where they can come back a little bit that's all i've got so far we're gonna keep going Awesome playing. Garrett, I don't know if you played everything too. It sounds sounds fantastic. Um <laughs> there's some good stuff going on at the end there. That's you going to get your pecan ice cream. Jeez, Garrett. <laughs> awesome, man. Um okay, so I have general comments, but you you kind of hit the nail on the head when you said I'm looking for objective criticisms, because um so much of this is subjective, especially in a piece like this where it's like, is that a great snare sound? It's not the first example I pull up as a great snare sound. Is it a great snare sound for this track? I would still like a little bit more crack on it and uh, to feel a little bit more, but yes, like it's it's in the vibe. So um, that's it's a tricky thing to comment on this. I feel like the high mids uh, in the guitars toward the end of the track on the loud section, they get a little bit harsh, but not crazy overtly harsh. Uh, it's also just from a lack of like the hi-fi sub thing. Um, so maybe it's something to look at. 
the uh the base i think um could use a little bit of cleanup work but uh overall i think it's i think it's amazing um prime time said the drummer missed a snare hit so maybe put the snare hit in um but i think uh i'm going to tell a, another quick story here and then we're going to do one more track um so uh to make this very very quick before i was with pyramix i went to um i was like a huge fan of Pizzato's place and looking for everything i could find to like eat up all this information right um just like all of us and i found out that vance powell was doing a workshop at blackbird for a weekend and he was going to record a band uh in two days and then mix it on the third day or maybe it was record i think it was three days so record record mix so he tracked the band to an eight track he brought his own studer head uh, it was a, a 16 or no it was a 24 track machine he brought his own head for the studer and it was an eight track head. He recorded everything down to eight tracks. Drums are in mono, much like what you just did. Um, and he did things like, uh, everything was like, it was just mixed decisions, right? It was like throwing a decapitator on something on the way in and like committing to that's the vocal sound. Um, and I watched him like craft this entire thing. It sounded like the biggest freaking thing I had ever heard in my life at that moment. Um, it was it was just huge and it sounded incredible and I was blown away, but I was also blown away by the fact that like how committed all of those sounds were, and I asked him like afterwards I was like what if the band walks in tomorrow and they decide that they don't want the vocal distorted, and he's like then they re-record it, and I was like oh they're right of course that's an option, but up until that point I was always kind of like capturing things from a point of safety and like. I need to make sure I always have a path backwards. And um, that was like, you know, the computer programmer in me from a previous life, like, you know, always watching for a back path and all that kind of stuff. But um, he was just going for it. And that, that's the difference between painting and documenting. Um, and what you're doing here is painting, not like, you know, necessarily like, like you said, I'm not sure if it's okay that I distorted the tracks on the way in. If it sounds good and that's what you were going for, you did it right, you know? And if you don't like it, re-record it. I think that Vance, like, he completely changed how I looked at recording after that. And then I shortly found Pure Mix after that, and that really changed things. But, um, yeah, like, go for it on the way in. Have something and commit to it, because I think that something, this is uh, the word that comes up in every single live stream that we do, all the mixing, uh, Q&A live streams, all that kind of stuff, and in the videos, the word that always comes up is intention. And when you approach something like this with intention and you go after it and you get it, um, no matter if somebody disagrees with your intention or not, you nailed it, you know? So it's the objective subjective thing. If you're moving with intention, you're going to create something that's very interesting. And I think that you've done that here. Um, if you listen to something and it's clipping in a bad way, if it's digital clipping and it's not part of the saturated sound that you're going for, yeah, it's fighting against your intention. So therefore it's not great. Um, and if you were eating pecan ice cream, I can't help you, but or pecan. Uh, but um, I think that you did a great job on this. And I would just, you know, look at things like, do you want more crack out of the scenario? All of that. And I would highly encourage you to go watch every Vance Powell video that you can find on Pure Mix um, and anywhere. But like we have a ton on Pure Mix and they're awesome. And I'm so glad that we do because uh, that thing with Vance happened with me before I was even a part of Pure Mix. And um, the Tyler Bryant series when we went to shoot that, uh, I remember telling Vance, like, my experience, you know, it was like, hey, like, I was at your workshop X number of years ago, and this is the thing that I walked away with, and that's exactly what I want to, you know, what I, like, hope that we capture on the series, and that's exactly what it was. It's like, if you watch that series, it it reminds me of exactly what I went through at Blackbird with him, but... um yeah, uh, I think it's great, and I love what you're doing, and I love the music. So I hope all that's helpful. Sorry I'm babbling so much, guys. I'm obviously getting tired. <laughs> but let's hit one more before we get out of here. Uh, I'm going to hit Call It Forever, and then that'll be it. If I uh, did miss you guys and you're super mad at me, tell me, and we'll listen before I go. All right, here we go. Or is it pleasure? I don't really know, it's hard to measure How can I see what's on your mind? How can I kill what makes me blind? Why you wanna leave me in the darkness? Never seen you acting up 
so flawless I wanna believe the sense of truth Cause all I can see is me and you Somebody's rescuing me from all that rain Somebody's taking me from all that pain I can put my heartbeat in record Capturing my lifetime storyboard This is for Awesome track, man. Very, very cool. Um, yeah, so you are a songwriter, record producer for more than 30 years. Congratulations. Uh, this is a demo song I originally wrote for Avant that didn't make the race, so I wanted to release it myself. The vocal on the track is my voice, amazing singer. Uh, from the original demo, tracked with an SM58. Wow. Uh, played all keys, wrote and arranged and mixed it myself. Wow. I uh, hope you enjoy. Yes, absolutely. Man, you're extraordinarily talented. The vocals are great. Um, nice job with that 58 too. 58 is a great, great microphone. Um, and you, you've definitely done well with it here. Uh, cause there are limitations as Tom pointed out, but it is still a great microphone, but you, you really made it shine. Um, I agree with pretty much everything that Tom is saying on the, I agree with everything that he's saying, and I might have a few things to add, but I think that this is great. The vocal performance is exceptional. And uh, because I'm trying to use a different word than Tom used, um, and I like the width as well. And everyone on here is tired of me complaining about phase stuff, but I actually I do like it on this, I think it sounds really good. Um, and Tom nailed it with wanting to help the lead vocal connect to the sides of the mix more. And the stereo chorus, uh, I'll have a stereo chorus on a send that I can add a bit of vocal to to spread it subtly out in the mix in my template and many a template. Um, there's a aux fader that has a send coming from the lead vocal with micro shift on it. I put it on the third program over and that's the sound and I just bring it up on an aux uh, and it, it does exactly what Tom's saying there. Uh, it helps spread the vocal out without doing any weird, super weird phase stuff. You can go too far, but um, I think it sounds uh, really cool and that would be a cool thing for you to try on this to just kind of take the vocal from here and kind of like make it like this. You know, if, if this is the sides of your mix too, I'm not saying only do this, but if these are the sides of your mix, you know, you're not taking it to try to make it do this and like stretch it out like pizza dough. You're, you're just trying to make it fill out the space a little bit or fill out some space a little bit. Um, so just kind of bringing that up to taste is a really cool trick that might be useful on this. Um, the kick, uh, felt to me like it, it could use a little bit more, more punch to it, the snare, a little more pop, like crack transient kind of thing. Uh, but overall I thought it was great. And then I really like Tom's comments 
about um, the arrangement on it. So his his point that the drum uh, groove is kind of staying the same from pre-chorus moving into the chorus, we need some more stuff to come in and drive that chorus and like push up the energy and elevate us to say, hey, I'm in the chorus. <laughs> um, so I think that, that, that some of that stuff might help out. Um, Karen Bassett says, what does phase sound like? What do you listen for? Um, I can't do it now with this setup, but if you were to take, Karen, if you have uh, any sort of stereo imaging plugin, like Waves S1, or uh, if you're in Logic, I believe that there's a built-in image plugin. Um, uh, any of the Brainwork stuff has stereo imaging on it. Take that knob and just dime it. Like, crank it all the way up and listen to that. That is the phasey sound that I'm always kind of, you know, yapping about. Um, so much that I'm annoyed with myself. Uh, but yeah, it just like over widening. And what it does is like a bunch of MS tricks and, you know, reduces the mids, turns up the sides, spreads them out a little bit, increases the phase difference, the phase correlation between them, um, or polarity difference, uh, however you want to say it, phase difference. It rotates the phase. Uh, yeah. How do you hear phase or can you see it on a plugin? So you can see it on Decibel. Uh, Decibel has a, a, try and pull it up here if i can i can okay uh decibel has a phase correlation meter so let me see if i have a preset in here my presets inside of pro tools like a dork um classics lr let me just start over again so here we'll just make it uh with the phase scope you can look at phase and I don't know if this will let us check this out. Let me see. Was I just muted that whole time? All right, sorry, gosh, I did it again. All right, I thought I was gonna get through today without having that issue, and here we are. Okay, so uh, I had the I had the face go up up. All right, face go. So uh, if that correlation meter over on the side, I can't. There's no way for me to really point to it. It's this one up there. The correlation meter. Uh, if that thing dives negative, that's telling you that there's a negative difference in the polarity. Like that's usually indicating that there's some sort of phase thing between left and right and all that. Balance is just telling you left, right balance. So I'm gonna hit a little bit of the song. Let's watch the meter thing. Here we go. Let's call it for And there's nothing super crazy on this one that's that's like wildly out but you know if it was super mono that thing would be all the way 12 o'clock high and and all that the other thing you can do is look at the stereo cloud uh so let me put that on here and i'll play a little bit here we go This is forever. This is 
Awesome. Yeah, hopefully that makes some kind of sense. But the stereo cloud, if it's just going like super, super wide, then it's it's kind of telling you that things are a little bit wide. Um, yeah, I, I hope that that helps. Uh, yeah, there's there's other ones out there too, but a phase scope is is the the way that you would look at it. But as always, never mix with your eyes. If it sounds good, it is good. Unless your monitoring's messed up, then you know you don't know what your sound is. But uh, if you have more questions about that, let me know and I'll try to try to answer them the best I can. You guys can also leave comments on this video after the stream if you want me to see something. I'm sure that somebody on the team will, will tell me that there's a comment I need to look at. Um, yeah. So I think that that's all for today. Um, yeah. Uh, Mike, thank you for coming uh, very, very much. Thank you for submitting the song. Karen, thank you for being here. Yes, I need a Mutomatic, but I need it to be triggered off of the web browser somehow. I haven't figured that out yet. Um, Mutomatic, Sound Radix, free plugin. It's awesome. Everybody go check that one out. And guys, thank you so much for being here. Primetime, uh, Kenneth, Wright, everybody that I see weekly, Mike. Um, it's always a pleasure to see you guys. Garrett, great job on that song. That was a really, really fun one. It's like right up my alley. Uh, Mike, shout out to you too for uh, for calling out the Broken Social Scene record. Um, great job. And that's really interesting to me that you like them too. We got to talk sometime. All right. Guys, thank you very much. It has been a blast. Um, very fun kickoff to the year. I will be back next Monday with another episode of The Great Big Plugin Show. And I think that we're going to be looking at Drum Replacer from UVI which I'll have a very special announcement for every PureMix member on that stream. So cool. Guys, thank you so much for, for being here. I'll talk to you next time.